Hello, Daniel. It's Tuesday. Why am I turning? It is now one week until I leave for Cardiff. I'm leaving next Tuesday, sometime mid-afternoon. You probably won't see any footage of me traveling to Cardiff next week, but in a couple weeks, you probably will. So, Daniel, in your video on Friday, you asked me if I think comics will go out of style. Now, unlike last week, I decided to make this entire video my answer to your question. But first, my fact for the week. So my fact for the week is that the comic book industry almost died in the 1990s, but I will talk more about that later. Now I want to say that just about all of the information in this video I got from Scott Nicewander over at NerdSync Productions. I have links below. You should go check out his videos because they are quite awesome and informative and I find them really cool. So without any further information, I present unto you Comic Books, A Brief History. Now, comic books first appeared in the 1930s. They were originally just reprinted material of comic strips that appeared in newspapers. However, comic publishers soon ran out of stuff to print. So, in 1938, the company that would eventually become DC released Action Comics No. 1, debuting the character of Superman and kicking off the Golden Age of Comics. The Golden Age of Comics was very simple, to the point, and quite patriotic. In the 1940s, when the U.S. joined World War II, Marvel debuted the character of Captain America, and many other already established heroes went off to war. After World War II ended, the superhero genre of comics started to kind of die out a bit in favor of things like horror, humor, western, and even romance comics. That's right, at one point there were romance comics. Then a scare in the 1950s, where parents thought that comics were toxic to their children, led to the eventual creation of the Comics Code Authority. Think of them as the MPAA, but for comics, censoring anything that might be unsuitable for children. So the Golden Age faded away until the latter half of the 1950s, when DC started reintroducing superheroes back into comics. Other publishers started doing this as well, dusting off old heroes and introducing them into the world of science. Now what I find very interesting is the different ways Marvel and DC approached this world of science. DC showed how science had all this potential, and that was good. We were at the height of the space race, all these new things were being created. But Marvel showed how science had this limitless potential, and that was scary. Creating, for the first time, reluctant heroes who were tormented by these new powers. Bruce Banner has to deal with this monster inside of him. The X-Men were outcast, feared, and hated because of a mutation in their genes. Peter Parker used his powers originally to make money, which ultimately led to the death of Uncle Ben. Science was scary, but it was there. Now, at the end of the Silver Age is when dates start to become a little more based on opinion. Fans often consider the end of the Silver Age and the beginning of the Bronze Age to be the death of Gwen Stacy. However, historians often consider that to be a couple years too late for the beginning of the Bronze Age. Most comic historians say that the Silver Age ended when Mort Weisinger left Superman and Jack Kirby left Marvel, both within a month of each other, in 1971. Now, the Bronze Age is when you'll start to see more darker, mature stories. Publishers started doing morally ambiguous characters and stories that dealt with drug abuse, alcoholism, and even racism. At this time, the Comics Code Authority was becoming less strict, allowing for these stories to happen. Publishers were trying to make their comics more culturally relevant, and even having more continuity in the stories now. Whereas before, a comic would wrap up nicely at the end, and the hero would carry on with their lives and go about their way. Whereas in the Bronze Age, you started seeing things that were rippling through future issues, holding tight onto the hero. The Bronze Age saw events that had relevance several issues down the line, and these events would haunt the characters continuously. So at this point in the comic timeline, things start to be very opinionated. Some people say we're still in the Bronze Age, others say the Modern Age and the Dark Age are the same thing, and it's all very confusing. So what I'm going to do is just describe each era and not worry too much about dates. So after the Bronze Age, you have the Iron Age, which is an age of retcons and fixing weird continuity errors and just trying to get to a point where you're happy. Then the Dark Age was where you had things like Watchmen, the Dark Knight Returns, these dark, mature stories that were brooding and intense. And then the Modern Age is generally what we're in now, where the stories are still dark, but they're not quite as dark. As far as my personal opinion goes, I like what Scott says in his video, where the Iron Age is more of a pipeline running through the dark and modern age where 
and you just need to get rid of something, you just throw it down there and don't worry about it. And then the Dark Age hit big and fast and then slowed down into the Modern Age. Now, just because I reached the modern age doesn't mean I'm done talking. I still have to talk about the comic book industry crash in the 1990s. And this was because of collecting comics. That was weird. Now, just because I reached the modern age doesn't mean I'm done talking. I still have to talk about the comic book industry crash in the 1990s. So the reason why the comic book industry crashed was because of people collecting comics. I know, it sounds weird, doesn't it? But this was because speculators were coming into these specialty comic book shops and seeing these comics and they thought they were rare, valuable things and this was at a time when Golden Age comics were being sold for millions. So these speculators would come in and see these Golden Age comics being sold for many times their original value, which was often just a few cents, and now being sold for almost six figures. So they thought, I need to get in on this, and they would buy, like, four or five copies of one issue, thinking that they can sell them later on and make a fortune. And the comic book publishers saw this, so they started printing millions of copies for half a million readers, thus oversaturating the market. And when these speculators saw that they couldn't make a fortune, they stopped buying them. But the comic book publishers still printed these millions of copies. So there was a low demand, but a high supply, and they couldn't keep up, they couldn't get enough return on their investment. So that hit the comic book industry pretty hard. However, the industry was able to recover in the early 21st century with the idea of free comic book day. Now around the same time as this whole collecting debacle, comic book movies were becoming more and more popular. Things like X-Men and Spider-Man were bringing superheroes into the public eye. So on May 4th, 2002, with the release of the first Spider-Man movie, comic book shops around the country held the first ever free comic book day where people could come in, get a free comic, often some nice deals, and they would be happy about it. And this idea, this day, brought the comic book industry back into something that was quite sustainable. So now, Daniel, back to your question. Will comics ever go out of style? And my answer to this is no. Comics have been around for close to a century now, and while they've changed and evolved over the years, they've always been there. I've heard stories of comic books saving lives because kids in the inner city would start reading comic books and then they would get excited about reading and learning and doing better in school and they wouldn't end up dead on the streets by 17. When I went to free comic book day this year I saw a family with two small children in the, in the comic book store and they were just looking at comics together being a family. About a week ago when I went to the comic book store I saw a dad under with his son who couldn't have been older than eight and the kid was smiling and laughing and pointing at things and he was just so excited about being in this comic book store and reading comics. When I see things like that, it reminds me that I'm not just reading comics, I'm not just reading stories. I'm part of this larger history that has been part of the world for decades upon decades. So while comics may evolve and change, I don't think they will ever go out of style. Daniel, I'll see you on Friday. And Daniel, my question to you is, what do you want to talk about other than comics?